There we go. There, it's a good fish too. Oh, he's right behind that rock. That is a quality fish. Hey guys, thanks for tuning into my channel. I'm gonna show you a strategy right here on this hole that if you do yourself, you're gonna catch more fish. And it really does help if you have one of these O-Pros third hand because it makes the switching of rods and different tactics much quicker than if you have to retie. But I wanna show you, stick with me, and you're gonna see that with this strategy, you will find success when fishing the same run of a river, even if you don't catch anything on the first pass. The rivers are in shape, and I'm up in the Cascade Mountains, and I cannot wait to get in there and hopefully catch some West Slope Cutthroat. I've got the bamboo set up just because it's got really good fishing karma, so I brought that today. And then down in the side holster, I've got my three weight with big dry. But I'm gonna start off with a big TJ hooker and a pheasant tail nymph dropper to see if I can catch fish in this beautiful little run right behind me. All right, let's go do this fish on. So I set my indicator, a big Oros indicator as you can see here, because I want to be able to see it, about two and a half feet from the top fly, making it about three feet to the bottom fly. So I'm going to start off just kind of at that depth and see if there might be uh, a fish that might be willing to eat. All right, didn't get anything uh, on the nymph, so I'm gonna try this uh, big old hopper here just to see if maybe I could bring something up. I'm gonna give it a few casts and see what happens. And if I don't get something that rises up, oh, a oh, Hunter Quick, there's there's a good sign, then, uh, then I might switch, but it was definitely a good sign to see a fish come up and bash it already. Notice I'm walking the fly out, covering all the water. So nothing really on the dry, a couple little guys swiped at it. So I'm gonna try this little Sculptzilla pattern here and just run it through this hole and see if maybe uh, I can get a fish to take, take some interest. You gotta keep trying different things in hopes that you find the right thing. There we go. There, it's a good fish too. Oh, he's right behind that rock. That is a quality fish. Yeah. Come on, baby. Oh, the cutthroat just twist, twist, and twist. Look at this guy. Oh, beautiful fish. Oh, wow. That is a good looking fish. Oh. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. What a beautiful fish. Wow. Try to get in the sun for you. So the first thing I started with was a nymph dropper. I had a big TJ hooker with a pheasant tail dropper and I ran it through this hole. Now you'll notice, didn't catch anything. So I thought, you know, I'm not seeing a lot of topwater activity, but maybe the fish might come up for a big dry. So I put on a big hopper, switched it really quick because I already had it tied on the other rod and started fishing this stretch and had a few little dinks hit it. Then finally, I did tie on a Sculptzilla to the three weight and ran it through the same hole again, all in succession. And within the second cast, I had a really nice fish on. So that just goes to show you, if you vary up your tactics and vary up the flies, even on the same run where you might think, ah, there's no fish here, they're there. You just have to find the right fly that they're willing to eat. And if you do that, each time you hit a stretch, you will catch more fish. 
and having the opros does help a ton because you could have a second setup at the ready without having to retie oh wow that tree just came down how crazy is that? I mean, seriously, how how many times has that happened to you? I'm just fishing, and all of a sudden I hear this huge cracking sound, and then off in the distance, I watch one of these, I think it's a cottonwood, or maybe it's a alder, not sure, but just fell. I mean, just as we're fishing. <laughs> Can you imagine if you're standing underneath that? No thanks. And now, the question has been answered. If a tree falls in the forest, doesn't make a sound if you're really not around. I don't know, I guess I kind of was around. It certainly made a sound. Oh no. I can save it. Got it. <laughs> save the fly. Wow. Took that in there close. That's tucking it in there a little too close. Dang it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Just threw the, oh no. He's gone. Just threw the new one out and he hammered it. Shoot. Well, we know, we know the, the next one I tied on worked. I literally just threw it out there just to kind of get myself ready and he came up and grabbed it. Pick a good fish, too. There we go. <laughs> the little guy. He's going airborne. Come on, buddy. Looks like a little rainbow. Ugh. Yeah. A little bow. Feisty. All right, buddy. Sweet. There we go. Fish on. Oh, fish off. Right where he's supposed to be. There we go. Fish on. Oh, I knew there had to have been something down there. It's a good change up. Nice, he took the, uh, that's a good rainbow, wow. No, it's a cutthroat. Nice. He took the nymph, the um, pheasant tail. Very cool. See you later.
Oh, that was a big fish. Oh, that was a big tug. There we go. Nice. Nice cutthroat. Look at that guy. Sweet. Seriously, there is just nothing better than fishing these small streams for these wild West Slope cutthroat trout. So good. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. And hey, if you're new to fly fishing and you need a little help with your fly fishing cast, I put together a tutorial right here. Really easy steps that'll help you get that fly out just a little bit further next time you're fly fishing. All right, everybody, until the next time, fish on.